Okay, the silent part of the video is over. Now let's get to the actual video of how you can transform pictures into manga backgrounds. You can do this digitally and traditionally. I will start with the digital way first. Open the picture in your drawing program. In Clip Studio there is actually a really easy way to turn a photo into a screen tone. You just turn it into screen tone in the layer settings. If your image resolution is quite high, then the picture will just look like a black and white photograph, so maybe you will need to change the image size first. If you are happy with this kind of outcome, you can use it for your manga. If the setting of your story is nothing but a background to fill the panels, then it can work, I guess. But I personally do not like this effect. You can just see that it was a photo turned into a screen tone. And in most cases, I think it looks really out of place, especially as a backdrop to black and white drawn characters. Some artists manage to do it skillfully, probably by editing the background a little bit more. But when I come upon a story where it's obvious that the backgrounds are just photographs, it really just takes me out of the story. It feels inorganic. So when I turn photos into backgrounds, I prefer a different approach. You might not like it, as it's still a lot of work, but the work is usually worth it. What I do is to lower the opacity and then to simply draw over the picture. I mean, it's kind of straightforward. And I learned this technique from a documentary about Inyo Asano. He creates his backgrounds mostly for photographs and photo manipulation. Which is, if you watch the documentary, it's not a cheat at all. So much work goes into this. I keep my process somewhat simpler. I do not turn the photograph black and white. Instead I decide on the go what I will make black, where I will use hatching, what I will leave white and where I will apply screen tones afterwards. Sometimes I make the layer with the photograph invisible just to see whether the contrast works or not and whether the composition is right. I think it's good practice for manga artists. Not only do you have to decide what you should paint black or white, sometimes you also have to reduce some things because they disrupt the picture and sometimes you will have to add some things. So an example for when I gotta change the things in order to make the picture look better, it's like this tree, obviously. It was probably cut down because there is a house there and the tree was just like growing into the window or something. I don't know. So they had to cut it down. But if you draw the tree like this, it just looks plain ugly. So I will change it here just so that it looks better. Even though it will be unrealistic. Because sometimes reality is not the most aesthetic thing. And also I will not draw these two trees because there is just too much foliage and I would rather have like this building fully in the picture. So yeah, that's that. Through this process I learned to be bolder with solid blacks, adding hatching or black areas instead of using screen tones. This process can be meditative in a way. You don't have to think that much. You can listen to a podcast or let a series run in the background. The only decision you have to make is what to paint black and what to keep white. You can also use it to practice your inking skills. This way you only have to concentrate on the lines and not on the motive. Once I'm done with the lines, I turn the photo layer invisible and see whether I need to add or remove some of the lines. Then I add the screen tones. This is usually quite a quick process as I already added lots of structure while inking. And voila, the background is done. You can do the same thing traditionally. For this, you can print the photo in really low opacity onto paper that is suitable for inking. Printing paper will probably work too if you use microns and not quills. And then you just ink on top of it. Microns are probably the easier options, but of course you can use ink and quill as well. Here too, maybe you can use this as a practice for your inking skills. This process is so straightforward, you don't have to have any experience with art to try it out at all. But of course, this is not a solution for everything. Sometimes you will have to create a background from scratch. And this process doesn't really teach you how perspective works and what the dimensions are. It can only teach you about values and maybe what details to add to your background but only if you pay attention to it. I personally notice how I often just tend to turn my brain off when I paint over a photograph. So I would be lying if I said that I learned a lot about backgrounds from this process. 
Then again, knowing how to abstract or hedge things while driving over a photo comes from my knowledge of drawing backgrounds in general. I know how I usually draw foliage or certain structures. So having this knowledge makes it easier to make the background look more manga-like and less like a photograph. Also, the world of my manga and other me is a fictional one. It doesn't exist in the real world. So I cannot use this method for that manga because I cannot make photographs on things that do not exist. I have to create a city from my own imagination. Also, think of copyright. Since you are changing the picture, maybe it can be considered fair use, but I'm not sure. The safest thing is to use your own pictures and do not use art by other artists to paint over, especially without giving credit. If it's just for yourself, then of course it's fine. But drawing over people's artwork and then presenting it as your own is, well, not just shitty, but also illegal. Okay, this last part might have scared you off from trying this. And you don't have to, really. But you can, if you want to. It can be quite enjoyable and relaxing. Inyo Asano has definitely perfected this way of creating backgrounds while still making them really his own staple. And sometimes when I look at the detailed background art of Jiruto Niguchi, I also can't help but wonder whether he did something similar. Or maybe he just had a really high attention to detail and a good understanding of 3D spaces. I guess you can say for sure that he did use photographs as a reference, but whether he drew over them? Let me know if you know what his process was. Okay, everyone, thank you for watching this video. I hope it was somewhat interesting. Um, I'm kind of not really sure what exactly I want to do with this channel. I kind of like to do some vlog-like stuff, but I also uh, like to do tutorials. So I guess um, I hope the mixture of it won't like scare everyone off, people who come for the vlogs and people who come for the tutorial, so I'm just trying it out. Tell me what you think about it, I guess. Also thank you to the coffee donations to the last video. Here are the names of the donators. Thank you so much for supporting me and supporting this channel. For everyone else, you can um, also support me by following me on my social media and or following me on this channel. Also you can read my manga and other me online for free or purchase a printed copy. And yeah, if you have anything to say, feel free to leave a comment. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!